Hey everyone, it's Matt Wellens. So today I just wanted to go through Max's journal as of the end of episode 2. And like I said previously, it's mostly just the choices that we've made throughout the episode, so it's not really necessary to read it while we're playing, but there is an interesting section at the end that is new information. But I'm just gonna slowly flip through each page right now just in case if you are curious to read all of the details. Let's see here, so this is just us waking up and pulling an all-nighter. And ran into Kate in the showers. Why is Victoria such a bitch? Oh, this part's actually interesting. The thought that Nathan wasn't here actually setting up this weird gallery is way fucked up. I better start being more careful around here. I almost want a surveillance system now. So that's a little bit of hint that maybe David is not a bad guy as he seems. We remember that he had an argument with Nathan while we were going to the school bus. And you know, if we had had that surveillance system in place, we would have been able to catch who went into our room. So there's some food for thought. Let's see, creepy text from private number. Gave Kate's book back. Kate confides in us. Kate asked if we should go to the principal or the police. We said, yeah. I ran into Warren, or rather Warren was waiting to run into me. We didn't tell him much, except we did say yes to going into the drive-in. And this is also interesting information. It looks like Max doesn't like Warren after all. Oh wait, I did say I would go to the drive-in with him. Hope he doesn't make a lame move on me. Not that he would, egomaniac. Warren and I do have a lot in common, but he's like a super cool geek brother. Anyway, I definitely need a movie escape. So there's that. Never mind, not gonna push Max to be with Warren anymore. <laughs> Before catching the bus, I saw Nathan talking to David. Chloe was late to breakfast. Joyce wasn't happy. Chloe showed up. We tested our powers. Chloe had to get pissed off at me because I dared answer Kate's call. I'm not a fan of Chloe's petulant side. She tried to make me feel like an ass, but screw that. Kate was so happy, I answered, I actually felt worse for her. Chloe has to know that I can have two friends at once. Yeah, Chloe is a little bit problematic, as much as everyone in the fandom likes her. So we went to Chloe's secret lair, found some bottles, Frank showed up, and he took our gun. Aw, oh, drama-rama. She told me about Frank. Then Chloe got stuck in the train tracks somehow. And we made it back to school. David Madsen talked to me without being a total prick. I'll give David props for trying to smoke the peace pipe with me, but he acts like he's still at war. Probably a good guy. Jefferson and Kate. Kate Marsh almost killed herself. So let's start reading from this page properly. Kate Marsh almost killed herself. My hands are still shaking, but I have to write this down while I can. Right at the start of Jefferson's class, Kate went to the roof of the girls' dorm to jump. Every student and teacher was watching her like it was a Blackwell rooftop concert. I saw her actually jump, but I was just about able to use my rewind to get her back on the roof. I tried harder than I ever did, and somehow I stopped time completely. I made it to the roof, but again, my head felt like it was going to blow up. I knew that I couldn't keep rewinding to save Kate. I had to try and talk her down on my own. She was already in so much pain over the video and all the bullying, so she wasn't going to buy everything I tried to tell her. You see movies with people trying to talk someone out of suicide, but it's very different when I'm the one doing the talking. I covered everything I could, and Kate almost jumped anyway. Cliché or not, I told her how much her friends and family love her, even if they don't all show it now. Lo and behold, Kate stepped back from the ledge, alive. I almost cried in her arms. I know this isn't about me, though I have to admit it was an amazing feeling to walk arm in arm with Kate from the roof to outside the dorm. Like I said, the whole school and police were watching us almost completely silent. Then I heard what sounded like Logan yelling out, Give it up for Max! and everybody started to clap and cheer. Talk about surreal. The people who ignored me or treated me like crap suddenly crushing on me. That might be the strangest thing that's happened to me this insane week. 
And that made me wonder if Victoria was watching and how she felt about all this. I almost wanted to find her, just to get in her smug face for enabling Kate's suicide attempt. Such cruel bullshit. Though to be fair, Victoria wasn't the only one that was responsible. Nathan Prescott seemed to have disappeared, which was probably a good thing. And after all that, I still had to talk to the police and give a statement. Felt so weird to do, since I've seen it in pretty much every police procedural show. I had to lie my ass off when he questioned me about the other students, because I just don't think the police are ever going to find out what happened. Yes, this looks like a job for Supermax, right? Though, of course, I do love it when Chloe calls me that, even if I don't feel that every day, heroic for helping Kate down. Maybe it's wrong for me to think I have to feel anything but grateful that Kate didn't jump. What was really odd was when all the students and faculty surrounded me and Kate, then started patting our backs and shoulders like we were heroes. I wasn't sure how to respond considering Kate almost threw herself off the roof because of everybody at school. But like I said, I can't blame everybody, and I still don't know where to point all my fingers. The very best thing was that even though Kate was still in tears and confused, I definitely saw her smile once she realized how happy everybody was that she was alive. I smiled too. The police and paramedics swooped in, and then Kate was covered in a blanket and gently escorted to the ambulance. They didn't thank me or look at me like I was a hero. I guess they're used to saving people without applause. But if I'm being super honest, it felt pretty cool, like I got a hug from the whole school. So maybe Blackwell Academy isn't totally bad. It's not enough that Kate is alive, and though I'm not enough of an egomaniac to take the credit, I still had to get Blackwell third degree from Principal Wells. It was bizarre to be in his tacky office with Nathan Prescott, David Madsen, and Mr. Jefferson calmly talking about why Kate would attempt suicide. I was quiet, but giddy inside, just replaying in my head the moment when Kate stepped toward me with a glimmer of hope in her eyes. Part of me wanted to smash Nathan's smug face against the desk, knowing he had a lot to do with Kate's suicide attempt. I thought about doing it, then flipping a quick rewind, but I knew that would be the start of a bad, dangerous habit. Fortunately, Principal Wells amazingly did the right thing and booted Nathan for a few days after I told him what happened in the bathroom. He must have had more shit on Nathan, because otherwise I doubt this would happen to a Prescott. That's some small justice for Kate. There will be more, if it's the last thing I do, which it could be if I'm not careful.